Hello, my art-loving friends. Do you guys remember these? <laughs> these came in one of the two really big, generous boxes I received from Kimberly Creek, and I did review the King Art watercolors in a previous video, which I will link over there for you. And this time we have their gouache, and I've been putting it off because of this. <laughs> This was a note from Kimberly herself, strong chemical smell, mediocre gouache and watercolor, but they make nice brushes. And she did send me one of their very nice brushes. So it's time to stop putting it off and just get into this smelly stuff and see what we think about it. Okay, first of all, just pulling it from the other table over there to this table, I can already start smelling something. <laughs> so let's open them up. Yeah. That's a strong smell. Whew, and they're still in their tubes. Oh no. <laughs> I'm going to have to open the windows, except these windows have no screens. But oh well, in come the flies and the wasps. So I think, yeah, opening a window would be good. Getting a fan in here. However, I am still excited to try it. It is gouache after all, right? And I'm kind of enjoying gouache lately. So I think I should get out my new Hanamule a4 sketchbook. I think that would be super fun to try that again. And we'll paint something with all this fun stuff. Except the smell, of course, is not very fun. All right, here is this pretty sketchbook. And it sure is pretty, by the way. <laughs> and I did the first page in that Class 101 video. I can link that for you, too. And did that one when I tested the Schmika watercolors. And it just makes me happy looking at this painting. I love all the bright colors. And even though the Schmika watercolors have a bit of a shine on them here and there. It's just really pretty. Their vividness is outstanding. So what I'm going to do probably is take my rag and cover this page. Like usually I would swatch on one half of the sketchbook, like the wrong side, and then paint on the good side. But I don't know, it just feels like a big space. I think we could do our little swatches up there just to make sure we know what the colors are and do a little painting down here. So that's the plan. Now I just have to find like a little dish, so I gotta go find my egg dish. And I debated about squeezing them all out ahead of time. I was afraid they would dry up by the time I got to the end swatches, but in the end I decided, yes, go ahead and squeeze them all out and then do the swatches, and it worked out just fine. And just because so many of you have commented about using washi tape in between my swatches, which I have done in the past before for the record in my Etcher sketchbook, I decided to get out my pinstriping tape. I've used this before and I have mentioned it before. Anyway, it's just, you get like a pack of five or six different widths of tape and it's very low tack, at least it's supposed to be, and it kind of seems like it is, but yet it sticks really well at the same time. So, I don't know. I think it's great. It's probably equivalent to washi tape, maybe a mix between the stickiness of washi tape and the stickiness of masking tape. That would probably be the best way to describe it. Anyway, I used it for these swatches. And the swatches were interesting because some of the paint was really easy flowing and some of it was more sticky. <laughs> and it didn't matter at the end of the swatching, like, you know, how I squeeze the paint out ahead of time. So by the time you probably get to the end, the paint is a little bit more hardened. That didn't matter. Even when I got to some of the end paints that I squeezed out last, that have sat the longest, it didn't matter. Some was super smooth and some were super sticky. So it's kind of interesting that there's a difference in consistency, which I mean, that that's maybe not too earth shattering because yeah, different paints do have different opaqueness and transparency and they do feel different, but these were kind of drastically different. And I did go back at the end and try and go over a couple of them to get a second coat, ones that I felt were pretty thin as far as the amount of paint I got on them at first because I maybe dilute, I thought it diluted them too much with water or something and they got really sticky then and did not layer well at all. Not a single one of them that I put a second layer over layered well. So that is something to keep in mind. And now we get to the super satisfying part of removing all of that pinstriping tape. This is sped up by about 200% here. So doing it at twice the speed and the tape is coming off beautifully so far. I did use a quarter inch thick tape. I do have thinner tape and I'll probably use the thinner one in the future, but it was nice to have that gap so I didn't like spill over onto the next swatch too badly. 
but I still did kind of spill over the swatch on a couple of them, which I tried to cover later. We were doing so good, and then the paper ripped. This tape felt pretty tacky on this paper, but it hadn't been ripping. Well, darn. But there is a beautiful swatch sheet for you. I started out my painting adventure by wetting the entire piece of paper. I just felt with the cloudy skies that I was trying to get in the background and some of the more muted mountains that it would be better if it were watered down. And I think I made the right choice there. So you can see I'm just using the same paint that I squeezed out for the swatches. And at this point, it had been probably 45 minutes to an hour. I did the swatches and then I took a small break and came back to the painting. So yeah, probably 45 minutes to an hour. And they're re-wetting just fine. I did have to squeeze out white some more and some yellow and I'll tell you a little bit more about that later and I somehow have an annoying fly <laughs> bugging me through this entire recording session and I think it's because I cracked open a window and the windows don't have screens right now because this used to be my son's room and when he took the screens out to put in like a swamp cooler for his room or an air conditioner I think it was an air conditioner it didn't take water so it had to be an air conditioner anyway uh, he like just drop the screens down on the ground and I don't know if animals stepped on them or what, but they got ruined and I have not fixed them. So if you see a fly through this whole video, that's why, because I opened the window and there are no screens. I'm gonna have to take care of that sooner rather than later. It would be nice to open these windows and not lose my cats out them or get flies and wasps inside. Regardless, the paint is interesting here. I did discover the same thing. Some paint, some of the colors, I should say, flow really smoothly, and some are very not smooth. <laughs> They're sticky. I guess that's the best way to describe them. And yes, I can add water to them, and then they flow better, but some are still just sticky. Like, you go to layer them over other paints, and it it's just grabby. I don't like it so much. Not to mention the smell. The smell is pretty drastic and it's something that you kind of forget about when you're in the zone painting. And here you can see I'm trying to cover over that gray. It, that was super fast. I, and I also squeezed out more white. Anyway, back to the paints. I don't know. I had just used the Holbein gouache that was so generously gifted to me a couple of weeks ago. And this was just a completely different experience. The Holbein gouache experience was so pleasant, so enjoyable, and this was kind of like I was fighting things. And regardless, the gouache experience itself was still really fun. I am finding it quite fun, actually, to work with gouache. So it is something that I'll probably bring into my channel a little bit more regularly. And I'm excited about that because I've had that adorable silicone palette that holds your gouache and is supposed to keep it moist longer forever now it feels like and I have not poured my gouache into it because I'm afraid to because I don't want to <laughs> pour it in there and then have it dry out on me but we'll probably get to that sooner rather than later because gouache is fun it is fun you guys I encourage you to try it out I have this terrible feeling that I was not recording that whole time because I just went to hit record and I don't know what happened so if you've missed all of this dang it because I don't have time to redo it but let's pull the tape off and see what we have. I do like this tape. This is that pinstriping tape that I have told you guys about before. I know we had that rip up there, but hopefully it's a fluke. Like I've never really felt this tape is all that sticky, but pulling it off of here does feel quite sticky. However, most of this paper is dealing with it quite well, so that's good because yeah, this tape, this tape does feel sticky. All right, let's see if we can get it off of that ripped section again without more damage. Oh, shoot. More damage. Come this way. I don't know. There's something about that section right there in the middle that it's not happy with me, but I was able to repaint that gray swatch. All right. There it is. I can definitely see the writing on the wall here with gouache. I am going to need to buy a large tube of white when I actually start painting with gouache regularly because that is the color that I kept squeezing out the most. In fact, that is the 
only color besides this mid yellow that was in this slot that I kept squeezing out. So I squeezed out the mid yellow once and I squeezed out white several times. And this is what we ended up with. So the smell is still here. You kind of eventually put it in the back of your mind when you're in the zone, the painting zone, you know, but it's definitely still pretty strong. It'll be interesting if I go out of the room and come back in, I'm sure it's gonna be very strong. So I don't really feel like I need to keep this gouache. So if one of you would like to try it, and if you're in the US, just put the word giveaway in the comments below and I will do a drawing and send this to you. But this time you gotta be in the US, sorry. I do like the contrast I was able to get. I was just having trouble getting the highlights. I think I mentioned that to you already. If that time lapse that you had recorded, I better go find out because if not, I need to tell you way more about this right now. So hang on. So yeah, I just checked and I lost the whole footage for the entire rest of the thing. So I don't know when my, maybe when my power cord came off the camera, it stopped recording or something because I noticed the power cord did bonk off even though the screen was still on. So that must have been something. Anyway, I've never used this camera with the power cord before. I've always used the battery, but when I put the battery on, how the battery was dead and the other one was dead and it was charging and there's a whole thing. But anyway, hopefully I will be able to tell you enough about this gouache to tell you that you probably shouldn't get it if you're sensitive to smells. I also don't like how sticky it is. And at the same time, if somebody wants a free set of 24 tubes of gouache, it is gouache. It re-wet just fine over here on this egg tray and works like gouache, it re-wets very nicely. Even on the page, I was able to blend previous layers a lot, and so that is very good. However, after just using that Holbein gouache that was gifted to me a few weeks ago, I would never want to use this over that. So even though that was just a few colors, well, quite a few actually, I think that was like 12 colors, quite generous, uh, I would definitely want to use that. And I also have my Imgram gouache, I also have, I think, an Artwell gouache that Kimberly sent me that I need to try out. So this one definitely is not my first choice. So hit giveaway in the comments below if you want it. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now. Also, I am one month late checking on this Artex gouache. So I put this in my phone as a calendar reminder. That is so pretty now that it's dry. I really like it. <laughs> I really like this whole spread. That is always a bonus when you like your sketchbook spreads. But anyway, I put the calendar reminder into my phone to check this after one month and the reminder went off. I don't remember if I was at one of my all days at the college when the reminder went off or if I was on vacation. And I thought I put the calendar reminder in my phone again to remind me as soon as I got back home, but I apparently didn't, or if I did, I didn't see it. So now it's been two months since I last used this and I wanna see what it looks like and probably respray it because I was nervous about leaving it. Oh, wow. So it all looks really good still, except that green. That green was pretty hard to begin with. Let me feel it with my finger. Oh yeah, it comes right off on my finger. So that's a bonus. So now that I put my water away and have paint on my finger, there we go. I have some wet on my blot sheet still. So I'm just going to take, oh, there's like a trash can in the way chair hang on got issues got issues this is just my tap water which is very sulfuric here at my house but that's okay <laughs> oh i have more gouache on me that's okay and i added one drop of clove essential oil in there and i'm just going to spray it again there's yeah this is this looks great oh i'm so impressed and relieved <laughs> so i'm gonna put some water in this again and shut it back up and I don't know, maybe even put the reminder on this next time for two months. I mean, it would be nice if I could get back to this and use it again before two months were over, but I have so many other fun things on my list to do that I probably won't get to it. All right, off it goes. Hopefully I put that lid back on the same way so that the paint colors are with the same paint colors, but I suspect I didn't. Well, very good news, guys. Your Artex, at least, gouache will stand up to a couple months for sure.
went in this hidey hole. <laughs>